the riotous mob is a dangerous adversary. Unless quickly dispersed, rioters can inflict personal injuries and extensive property damage. Criminals and the criminally insane, barricaded and armed, are a very positive threat to the safety of anyone within range of their weapons. When lesser means have failed, chemical munitions in sufficient quantity can safely enforce meekness on the violent and establish the control which will permit routine police action. Tear gas properly used is an invisible, dependable, and effective weapon for law and order. Tear gas is a combination of chemicals which produce severe irritation of the eyes, nose, and throat and cause ineffective vision. The person exposed to tear gas is forced to vacate the saturated area, but no permanent disability or ill effect results from the exposure. Tear gas comes in a variety of containers, each designed for specific uses. Each contains the same chemicals and is readily identified by its red marking. Other gases are identified by different colors, such as green for sickening gas, which produces nausea and is used in cases of extreme and prolonged resistance. The tear gas grenade is effective for mob control and other general use. The jumper repeater grenade, actually three powerful grenades in one, discharges three large blasts of tear gas in rapid succession, each from a different location. The 37 millimeter or one and a half inch caliber gas gun will fire the short range shell used principally in riot control the standard long-range projectile shell, or the super long-range barricade projectile. Because it is designed for use where a high degree of accuracy is required, this projectile is equipped with stabilizing fins. In a special kit available for immediate use is a complete assortment of gas munitions, including projectiles and grenades. A mask, light, compact, and efficient, is mandatory equipment for those who must occupy the area in which gas is to be used. psychologically important is the fact that tear gas itself is invisible. It's difficult to avoid what you can't see, and there's greater fear of a concealed opponent. Lake Erie supplies munitions with invisible gas. A smoke grenade is used here so that the affected area can be identified. If a vapor cloud can be seen, it may also be avoided. Classroom instruction on the use of tear gas will provide the student with basic information, but there is no substitute for field training. On the range, practice sessions with a competent instructor will demonstrate how each of the various types of munitions are discharged. Here the student can appraise their potential.
The Model 34 instantaneous tear gas grenade weighs one pound and is easily tossed 50 or 60 feet. Equipped with an automatic firing mechanism, its gas is discharged in a single blast from vent holes in less than two seconds after it leaves the thrower's hand. The discharge immediately empties the container, saturating the area. Because it does not burn, there's no fire hazard and there's no chance for anyone to pick it up and throw it back. Highly effective in mob control, it also has a variety of uses in evacuating criminals. After the pin is pulled, the grip on the strap handle controls the firing mechanism. When the handle is released in throwing, the grenade is activated. Internal combustion opens the vents, discharging the gas in a single blast. The jumper repeater instantaneous grenade is the result of years of research by chemical warfare authorities. Its firing mechanism is the same as that of the Model 34. The jumper repeater chases the mob or barricaded criminals by discharging in rapid succession three blasts of concentrated gas from different and unexpected locations 10 or 12 feet apart with no risk of fire. The first blast occurs within two seconds, 40 or 50 feet from the thrower, and two blasts follow at one second intervals. Thus, within four seconds, there is an irresistible concentration of gas in three different places from the same container. When the jumper repeater leaps into action, it keeps them guessing and on the move. While similar in appearance, the jumper repeater is somewhat larger than the M34 grenade. Each is identified on its label and full instructions are printed on the containers. In a field demonstration, six smoke-filled jumper repeater grenades make an impressive display of saturation. The 37 millimeter or one and a half inch caliber standard long range projectile shell weighs 22 ounces. Highly effective in riot control, it can be dropped into a mob from a considerable distance. With an effective range of 30 to 100 yards, it will spew over a 20 foot circle six seconds after it leaves the muzzle of the gas gun. Its aluminum casing opens along a scored line without shattering, eliminating the possibility of injury from flying metal. The one and a half inch short range defense shell is used where immediate and direct action is necessary at close range. 
To avoid possible injury from the wadding contained in the short-range shell, the gun should be pointed at the feet of the persons toward whom the gas is directed. Gas is blasted directly from the gun muzzle and is immediately effective to a distance of 35 feet in still air. At that distance, the gas will spread approximately 15 feet. Again, with the short-range shell, the blast is directed at the feet of the crowd. The True Flight Super Long Range Barricade Gas Projectile Shell, fired from the True Flight gun, has an effective range of about 200 yards. All of the gas in the projectile is delivered at the target since it is released by means of an instantaneous impact fuse. The body of the projectile rips open and gas is instantly dispersed. Window targets 50, 75, and 100 yards away are easily hit. A demonstration with a smoke-filled shell proves True Flight's capacity for saturation. The projectile has sufficient weight and velocity to penetrate light board partitions. With such power, it is of course a lethal weapon, and if fired directly at a person, might cause serious injury or death. There is no fire hazard involved in the use of Lake Erie grenades and projectiles. Gas is instantaneously discharged as a non-flammable vapor and cannot cause fire. The gas mask is essential equipment for those who must occupy the area where tear gas is present. Light and compact, its rubberized face piece fits snugly without irritation. Large shatterproof lenses are adjacent to deflector tubes which prevent fogging. The aluminum canister provides a large surface area for easy breathing. The wearer is able to move into contaminated areas without ill effect.
Since gas will drift with air currents, it is important to consider wind conditions in the field and to use these air currents to advantage. Smoke-filled munitions are used again so that we may easily follow the drift of the vapor cloud. On a windy day in a large open area, tear gas may be carried in the air a considerable distance from the point of discharge. If existing wind conditions are properly appraised, gas can be released many yards from the target zone and move intact into the area where its effects are needed. This smoke cloud simulates the movement of gas vapor carrying its potent effect into the target area. On a still day in the same location, the gas cloud tends to hover in the area where it is released. In a closed building, tear gas will remain effective for days or until dissipated by ventilation. When pursued criminals or persons escaping from custody seek refuge in abandoned buildings, cellars, and other hiding places, Valuable time can be saved and the risk of life minimized with a proper use of tear gas. After officers are deployed to cover possible routes of escape, tear gas will reduce the hazard of making the arrest. Behind prison walls is the latent threat of violence. Trouble can erupt with little warning in a quiet prison yard. Angry mobs may then be controlled without injury through the irresistible authority of tear gas. In the case of armed, barricaded criminals, the objective is to get them out in the open, sufficiently disabled so that they can be apprehended with a minimum of danger to others. Gun battles in such cases involve serious risk of the lives of officers and bystanders. When the situation calls for tear gas, it should be readily available. Many law enforcement agencies provide each patrol unit with tear gas munitions for every emergency, or have a specially trained gas squad ready for immediate assignment.
Since the specific purpose of tear gas is to cause evacuation, avenues of exit for the criminals must be considered. Officers should be deployed so that they can cover the exit routes. No human being can voluntarily remain in premises saturated with tear gas. In this simulated riot, and in every case where it has been decided that tear gas will be employed, it should be an all-out effort to control destructive violence and prevent bodily injury. The area to be covered determines the amount of gas which will be used. The most effective practice is to get a heavy concentration of gas to the point desired in the shortest possible time. The gas must be instantly and positively effective and not easily avoided. Tear gas will cause movement away from the area it covers and the route of escape should be provided by the placement of the gas. Lake Erie's grenades and projectiles immediately saturate the target area without fire hazard. The possibility of picking up an unexpended missile and throwing it back or tampering with it in any way is eliminated since all of the gas has been discharged and is at work where it is needed. Training is essential to the success of tear gas operations and Lake Erie distributors are ready to help in the training program. In the classroom and in the field, officers should be properly instructed in the use of munitions and equipment. From gas supplies on hand, which have reached the three-year expiration date, munitions may be drawn for field exercises for all personnel. When the situation calls for tear gas, it should be used efficiently and in enough quantity to assure complete saturation. Properly used, it is the safest and most humane deterrent to violence and resistance to lawful authority.
There is a Lake Erie grenade or shell for every problem, ready to provide in an instant adequate amounts of powerful and effective gas to control and disperse the riotous mob or evacuate the barricaded criminals.